The sound of a microphone crackling came from the podium at the other end of the room. Someone you assumed that must be the host for the evening was asking everyone to sit down in preparation for the meal and speeches. You and Cove looked for your table, finding it easily enough by the little name cards that were placed del delicately beside the napkins. A few others joined you at the table, though they weren't anyone that you recognized. The host was still speaking as people were settling, starting off the speeches by giving a welcome to everyone attending. She went on to provide some more information about Orca, which you suppose was for the guests who weren't a part of the organization and the purpose of the fundraiser tonight. Orca's goals, as she explained it, were to aid in the conservation and restoration of oceans and beaches. There were many people who had helped to make the group as successful as it was. That's a good cause. When she read off a list of several volunteers who worked on making the event happen, Cove's name was one of the first to come up. His chest popped out in pride at that. As she continued to thank the large donors for the event, you checked over at Cove. He was still grinning happily to himself and tapping his finger over the tops of his knees, pretty pleased to have been mentioned by name. You laughed quietly at his reaction. You rolled your eyes. You were excited for him. You tried to keep focus on the speech. You were excited for him. He had worked so hard to make this event happen, it was the least that he deserved. While the host continued speaking, multiple servers dressed in black were setting the first course of the menu in front of guests. I wonder what it is. One of the servers set down a plate in front of you and you thanked them quietly, before looking at over the dish with interest. You recognize the dish as a simple Caesar salad. Simple Caesar salad for a place like this? Alright. I'm gonna wait and see, like, what the rest of the food is before I can form my opinion. But so far, a simple Caesar salad? Mm, okay. The host quickly wrapped up the end of her speech, thanking everyone once more before inviting you all to begin your meal. Anyone who had included a spe specialty, a special dietary note when signing up for the event received a vegan or vegetarian version, and there were also small baskets of breads that are on the table. You ate the sa both the salad and the bread. You just ate the salad. You just ate some of the bread. You didn't eat any of it. I'm definitely eating both. Cove wolfed down his salad before munching into a breadstick, quite quickly devouring that as well. I hope the next part comes out soon and is bigger. You could hear him mumbling to himself as he reached over for another piece of bread. He glanced around the table, and you followed his line of sight with curiosity, noting that everyone else was still eating the salad. Stopping, in his hand, stopping his hand mid-air, he quickly pulled back and rested it on his lap without taking another breadstick after all. It was clear that he was starting to feel unsure of himself, and he looked a little out of place here. He folded his arms and turned away from them to you. Hey, did you like the salad? It was really good. It was too small. It was alright. It was pretty bad. You simply shrugged. I'm gonna say it was alright. I was... Hoping for something a little bit more impressive. It, uh, I've had better. His gaze remained purposely tunneled on you, as if he was trying not to even think about what the rest of the table might be doing. You gave Cove a pat on the hand. You made silly faces at the other guests while they weren't looking. You picked up a breadstick and gave it to Cove. You discreetly flipped the other guests off. You sat there quickly, quietly, feeling uncomfortably yourself. I'm gonna give uh, Cove a pat on the hand. His lips tilted up at the corners, and he seemed touched by the reassurance. It wasn't much longer until the main course was arriving, and the various chicken, steak, and veggie dishes were being served throughout the room. An array of scents wafted through the room, making your mouth water. You had chosen the chicken. You had chosen the steak. You went with the vegan meal. You went with the vegetarian meal. I'm definitely a steak person all the way. It was nice that you had been given the option of how you liked your steak cooked, and the meal and the plate in front of you seemed perfectly to your taste. Cove had gone for the steak, and once he started again, he was completely absorbed by his meal. You're gonna choke if you keep inhaling your food like that. You kicked him under the table teasingly. You put a hand on his thigh under the table. You flicked something at him while he was off guard. You focus on your own food. I'm gonna put a hand on his thigh. You couldn't resist a little teasing while he was distracted. Your arm reached forward out of view of everyone else, hidden by the heavy tablecloth. You let your fingers lay to rest on the center of his nearest thigh. I meant, I didn't mean to do that to like, tease him. I meant to do it to like, tell him to, you know, you want to slow down. Cove stopped eating immediately, his elbows banging against the top of the table in shock as his face slowly turned red. The tableware next to him rattled over from the impact. When it settled down, he spoke creakily without moving to face you directly. Yes? Nothing. Is something the matter? His flustered frown deepened. That's... Vaughn, you should probably... If Cove's voice trailed off quietly, and you got the impression that he was about to ask you to stop, but he didn't really want you to. You kept your hand there. You kept your hand where it was for a little longer, giving his leg a gentle squeeze until he cleared his throat and leaned in closer to you. You probably uh, shouldn't keep doing that right now. Fine. 
It was a shame it had to end, but you weren't you were content how long he had let you keep your hand where it was. I honestly was trying to do it just to tell him to just as a way to get him to stop eating so fast. When you returned your hand to your own lap, Cove let out a small sigh of relief and continued eating again, though at a slower pace as he, as he was still distracted from the event. Dinner eventually ended, and the last of all was dessert. A lemon sorbet that had been partially dyed blue. Oh, cute. Blue lemon sorbet. The mix of white with bold streaks of blue made the little scoop look like a ball of roaring ocean waves. Okay, now that's cool, I have to admit. The effect was very pretty, but the serving size was small. Perhaps it was the price to pay for artistry. You turned to Cove to find him pouting a little at the size of it. Digging into the dessert, it took him only a few bites to polish it off. Again, the other people around the table had barely even begun eating. An unimpressed air settled over him as he sat back in his chair, sipping at his water unhappily. You, would appreci you should appreciate what you got. You laughed at his moping. You're such a big baby. We can get more dessert later. You cleared your throat. We can get more dessert later, sweetheart. You gave him an encouraging smile. He looked up at you sheepishly, embarrassed to have been caught sulking over such a thing. He, fun he fumbled for a defense. I mean... It was just really good, that's all. And now it's gone. But I'm okay. It's alright. I make my own ice cream. I make my own homemade ice cream, so... If you want more, I got you covered, Cove. With a slight grin, he shrugged to show that he was really fine. He is fine. Would you like a bite of mine? Do you want my dessert? All right, Cope. I'm, I love, I love, you know, my boyfriend and girlfriend, but I don't love them enough to, like, I want my share. I want my share of my food. <laughs> you know, I want my share of my food. Um, if he's not starving, then I want to enjoy my own, my own my own dish. I will share mine if we have different things. That's what I do all the time. I try to, if we're at a restaurant, I will like encourage to buy different things so we could all have share a bit, like take a bite of each other's plate or even split it in half. But if we're both having the exact same thing, I'm eating my, the small amount of lemon sorbet that we have, I'm eating my own and then I can treat him to dessert later. I can buy him an ice cream somewhere else later. So, all right, Chloe Cove. You spooned a mouthful of the sorbet into your mouth, enjoying the bright, citrusy taste in your tongue. It was, really was delicious. Cove had his own share. He'll be fine. Uh, another person from Orca, he's a big boy. Another person from Orca got up on stage to make a speech as everyone was nearing the end of their meal. They spoke mostly about the individual projects that the organization was working on and their plans for the near future, as well as encouraging anyone who was interested to consider volunteering. Cove bent forward over the table with his chin balanced on a hand, listening attentively to the words. As they came to a conclusion and everyone gave them a round of applause, Cove caught your eye and smiled. You wondered what would happen now. And then the lights dimmed. A couple of spotlights came on, projecting a water light effect around the room. The guests gushed over the ambiance, and you looked around with wide eyes at the ripples on the walls. See, that's cool. The DJ that had previously been playing some soft mood music in the background announced that the floor was open for dancing, slowly turning the volume up so it drifted to the space. Oh yeah, this is what I've been waiting for. Since the food was so, 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 okay, you know, since the food seemed to be okay, dancing is where I definitely want to enjoy myself. When you got to Kobe, his eyebrows had shot up and he mumbled quietly. Huh. I didn't know there would be dancing. I guess it makes sense now that I think about it. He gave an awkward laugh as you both watched as people rose from their seats. It was clear now that many of the donors were couples. A small crowd had started to form on the dance floor and the DJ played a romantic song to get everyone started off. Cove let his gaze float over the small sea of guests who were moving onto the floor, his hands twisting in his lap and his lips pulled into a tight line. And then with the breath and the lift of his hand, he turned to you. Well... Wanna dance with me? Yeah! I feel like part of the reason why he's a little bit more bolder about dancing is because of what happened the last time we went to an event like this. And he was definitely a lot shyer about dancing, but maybe I kind of like pushed him a little bit out of his comfort zone to be willing to ask me to dance. Of course I do. I was just about to ask you the same thing. I don't really want to dance. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Shut up and dance with me. His face lift up, lit up. You could tell even beneath him that dim light. Accepting Cove's outstretched hand, you rose from your seats together and stepped out onto the floor. 
When you had found the spot for yourselves amongst the other guests, you turned and faced him, standing close. Cove gave you a small smile as you looked directly at him in front of you. He seemed a little nervous. Um. I don't know how to dance. Not for real. I'm pretty sure I would have taught him by now, but it's alright, game. He admitted with a slight squeeze to your hand and a sheepish look. You gave him a reassuring grin and nudged a little closer to him still. It's okay. I know. With a familiar face full of affection, he let you go of you and raised his arms to slide both of his hands behind your neck. You wrapped your arms around him in response. Together you gently swayed to the music, moving your feet in time to the, de to the delicate beat. It was nice just being here like this in each other's arms. You didn't have to worry about whether you knew the right steps or not. There was always a way to make it work between the two of you. Cove leaned his head in near to yours, his forehead so close to yours that they almost touched. His breath was warm as he let out a contented sigh, tickling your skin. You really do look so good tonight. You're such a gorgeous guy. Thank you. You smiled widely, feeling your cheeks hotter at the compliment. Have you had a nice time? I hope you did. Uh, yes I have. I came here with you, so yeah, I'm having a pretty bad time until right now. Well, I've had worse nights. You leaned in and kissed him. His eyes fluttered close, close as your lips met in a soft kiss, and when he pulled back, he smiled at you gently. His bright eyes locked on yours, studying you with unmistakable adoration. Thank you for staying. You're still here, just like you promised you would be. Your heart felt light as you continued to sway whilst holding your most beloved person. So glad to be able to share a moment like this with him. His smile suddenly tilted unexpectedly. You couldn't guess the thought that crossed over his face. Hey, Vaughn? Yes? His voice, a gentle whisper, he let you in on his, his small secret. You know, I like to complain about things and that other people can stress me out, but... It's nice. Coming here with you tonight didn't make me feel bad, not even a little. Your lips parted at the words, old memories rushing back to the surface of your mind. Those of your very first formal party together, the summer soiree at the country club. Yep, I think it's all about the soiree. A lot of growth, growth happened there. In an instant, you were 13 years old again, sitting on a grassy hill in a dark golf course with your neighbor. It was an experience you could never forget, where it felt as though there was no one else in the world and where he had made you feel like there was no one else in the world he wanted to be with more. That was the night Cove tried so hard to enjoy with you, but had been plagued by his anxieties despite it all. And now, Cove, I'm so glad. You began to tear up happily. It was probably the water theme of this party that you would ease. You were speechless. I'm gonna say, I think, I, I'm i gonna say, uh, I'm, a little, I'm an emotional person, so I'm gonna begin to tear up happily. Sniffling quietly, you gave him a watery smile, fearing you would choke up with emotion if you tried to speak. Cove's hand caressed the back of your neck, making you feel truly treasured. Even though I still get like that sometimes, then there's other stuff in our lives that's too much for me to deal with. When there's other stuff in our lives that's too much for me to deal with, but being with you, that's not one of those things. You make it so easy to do. You make me happy, more than happy. When I'm with you, I feel safe. His voice wavered ever so slightly, his feelings getting the best of him. Hi. I want, I want more than anything to be able to do that for you. He broke on the last words, tears glistening in the corners of his eyes. Is he about to propose to me? You already have. You wiped away his tears. You nodded quietly. I'll always be there for you, I promise. I'll, you kissed him. Closing the gap between you, you leaned in and pressed your lips to his. His hand moved to cup the back of your head as he kissed you deeply in return. Then he pulled back slowly, his smile never leaving his face. A lot has happened, huh? You nodded faintly. You weren't sure if he meant just today, this summer, or your entire time knowing each other, but it didn't really matter. It was true either way. Thinking back on the years that you and Cove had been neighbors, it was difficult to even try to reflect on it all at once. I'm so glad. I'm glad we ended up here. He gave you a soft look and you beamed, knowing that could also mean many things. But from his tone, you were certain that he didn't only mean here, at this event. It was more than that. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. So am I. I think, well, I think we have to tell your dad thanks. You're amazing. You couldn't even speak. He chuckled happily, the two of you and the long adventure you've been on. I think I, I'm the kind of person who would crack a joke. I think we have to tell your dad thanks. Probably. You loved him. Fully and completely you did. His smile widened and he pressed his body against yours, resting his head into the crook of your neck, stroking the back of your head with his fingers. You tightened your grip on him and let your head fall against his shoulder. 
As the night drifted on, you held each other tight, swaying to the music as if you were the only ones in the room. Cove was sweet the entire time, his warmth bursting, brush, warmth brushing against your skin as he whispered words of affection in your ear. He was extremely good at making you feel special. You couldn't have hidden your blissful smile even if you wanted to. The party eventually started to wind down, and at last, it came to an end. When the main lights turned on, you blinked against the brightness of them, making sure you still had Cove in your sights. I hope that they played, like, upbeat party music too. Like, if it was... The entire, like, night was just slow dancing, I'd be upset. Because I'm really all about, like, the high-energy, like, dancing. Um, when the main lights turned on, you blinked against the brightness of them, making sure you still had Cove in your sights. One final speaker came up to the podium on the stage, thanking all the guests for coming and wishing everyone a good night. It was bittersweet to see it come to a close. Your time with Cove here was precious. At least the memories could be brought with you. At least the memories could be brought with you. Giving the space one more look, you walked together with Cove out, the park, out to the parking lot. The other guests were doing the same, so you got stuck in a bit of a crowd. Though Cove was so tall, you could always see him, and it was easy enough not to get separated. The parking lot itself was quite big and even more noticeable now with fewer cars blocking the view. It, was, it took a little while to actually locate Cove's car across its expanse. Eventually you found it, and the two of you bundled inside the vehicle and buckled up. The trip home was quiet as you both slightly reflected back on the experience. The event had been the biggest night of the year for Orca, and now it was all over, just like that. Outside your window, the surroundings soon became familiar and you found yourselves back in your neighborhood. Cove pulled the car into his driveway and put it in park before letting out a relieved breath. Mm. Home sweet home. Yeah. After climbing out of the car, you walked slowly down the road, Cove coming over to stand beside you. You stopped in the middle of the street, right between your house and his, and turned to him, finding him in the process of opening his mouth to speak. Strangely, he clamped his lips together, as though he had suddenly thought of better of it. You stayed silent. That was quite a night. Good night, Cove. Thank you for taking me tonight. This is kind of awkward. Thank you for taking me tonight. Thanks for coming with me. You kissed him goodnight. You stepped in for a hug. You ruffled his hair playfully. You gave him a friendly nudge. You patted him on the arm. You waved goodbye. You kissed him goodnight. Needing to be close again before the night ended, you pressed your lips against his in a gentle kiss. He smiled as you separated, running his fingers over the side of your face. Night. Night, Vaughn. With a last wispy smile, he left towards his front door. Figuring you should linger in the street for much longer, you crossed the remainder of the road and did the same. When you reached your house, you pulled out your keys and stuck them in the door, trying your best to be silent about it. Opening the door a crack, you turned back and looked at Ko from over your shoulder. Your eyebrows lifted in surprise to see he was doing the same, holding his front door open, but watching for you to go inside before he did. You shared an amused smile before you both stepped into your own houses, locking the door behind you. It was quite late, so everyone else was already asleep. As quiet as a mouse, you tiptoed up to your bedroom and changed out of your formal clothes into your pajamas. Now that you were finally home, you were exhausted. You brushed your teeth and got ready for bed in darkness before crawling under the covers and letting out a heavy breath. It was still strange to think how about how that it was, how how to think about how that was it. The build up to the event had felt like so much, now it was completely behind you. Your mind was busy with rapid yet muddled thoughts as you faded closer and closer to sleep. As unconsciousness creeped up on you, you felt more content. It was a big deal, but there would be more in the future. You could accept what it had been, and you could dream about what you would get to experience next. And then you were taken away from dreams right back into reality by a sound. Your eyebrows pinched together, fully unprepared to be part of the waking world again. The day was over, and it had been an eventful one. But you heard another noise. It was tapping. Your eyes flew open. The window there was a tapping that came from... The window. There was a tapping that came from your window. That's a weird sentence. The window. There was a tapping that came from your window. Hope Holden. You slowly forced yourself to get up. You went over to let the guy in. You rushed over to him. You went over to let the guy in. You extricated yourself from your bed, yawning. You stretched your arms and then made your way to the window. There's no need for me to, like, rush at him because, I mean, I just saw him, A, and B, I think we've established that he comes to my window all the time. So it's like, oh, okay, it's Thursday. Sure, Cove's here. There was another tap right before you arrived. When you pulled it wide open, Cove was indeed there. 
You would not have been surprised to find Cove awkwardly crouched under window ledge, because like I said, he does this all the time for years. However, you were taken aback to see that he was a little overdressed. Cove hadn't changed out of his formal clothes. You also noticed that he was perched clumsily. You didn't know if it was because he was trying to keep his fancy clothes clean or if he felt weird about something. His body was too stiff and awkward. Is he about to propose to me now? Cove smiled sheepishly. Hi, Vaughn. Hi, Cove. Why are you here? How come you're dressed like that? It's nice to see you, Romeo. Have you looked at the clock? It's too late for this. You remain silent. It's nice to see you, Romeo. You moved aside and let him climb inside. He cautiously stepped, by the, stepped out by stretching his legs over. Strangely, he didn't use his hands for support. It was clear to you now. He was holding something. Uh-oh. When he was safely on his feet, he briefly checked out his clothes, twisting around to see the back of his pants. He caught you looking and shrugged. I mean... I did go home for the... I did go home after the event, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to settle down, so I just walked back out. I need a fresh air and time away from everything. He paused for a moment and raised his clasped... and raised his clasped together hands where you could see them. But then something happened, and... well, so I have something I want to show you. Cove grinned like a child and gently unfurled his fingers, not being able to keep you in suspense for even a minute. <sighs> oh, it's not a ring. It's okay. Carefully sitting inside was a tiny yellow light. It blinked off and then on again. A firefly. I know the significance of the fireflies. Delicately, he moved his hand closer to so you could see the creature better. They're back. He closed his eyes, his smile now faintly illuminated by his insect companion. <laughs> Remember the first time I caught one? I always will. I could barely manage anything because of that neon pink cast I was stuck with all this summer. You were still stunned by what was happening, but couldn't help snickering when Cove did. It was thanks to you that I finally held a firefly in my own hand. I was happy to. Honestly, I didn't think I'd see them this year. I don't know why. It's just they were kind of late, and I guess I've been worrying about a lot of stuff lately. You could tell that the firefly genuinely lifted his spirits. He seemed at peace, and he wanted to share that with you. The fact that his first thought after discovering the fireflies was to come over and celebrate the joy with with you made you suddenly feel very cherished. Cove opened his eyes, but he looked away, not meeting yours. It's nice. It's really nice, I think. Even if the fireflies disappear for a while, it doesn't mean they're already gone. They'll come back. I can see them again. You smiled. Technically, fireflies aren't even gone. They're just eggs and larvae. <laughs> I wouldn't be like that. You waited for them to kill you. I'll smile. And then you looked at the firefly keenly. There was definitely something poetic about them. You felt a warmth in your heart. Cove looked at your face, his smile now fragile. It makes me think about the two of us. We were together, then we say goodbye, and then we're together again. Day after day, year after year, and Cove, we live right across from each other. I mean, for real, dude. Even if our time apart gets longer, that doesn't make it forever. Vaughn. Vaughn, I'll always be there, whenever you want to see me. You were so in love with him, there was nothing else you could think then, and he needed to know. You were so happy to be with him, he needed to know that. You quietly said his name. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm in love with I was in love with him. You're so in love with him, there's nothing else you could think and then, think then, and he needed to know. Your heart started pound, started to pound in your ears, and all you could hear was blood rushing. You looked at Cove and found yourself fixated. The only thing you were aware of was your rapid pulse and him. It was as if your entire relationship was playing over in your mind, every step that led you here. Everything from the first night you met to how you started as little kids, you were good friends, and grew even closer. The first time you saw fireflies together, to the first time you snuck in your room, and then to every other moment you shared, all of it came back to you. Cove's expression had turned curious as you left him, waiting wordless. He tilted his head in a question. His lips parted to speak, but you went first. I love you. I'm in love with you. I love you, Cove. I love you so much. I love you, Cove. With your confession, the world, world stopped for a second. Cove froze. Then, as if your words had turned to faucet, tears began to fall down Cove's cheeks. He silently mouthed something, but you couldn't make out a word. Oh, this is adorable. Cove, I think I just broke my boyfriend. I think Cove has to reboot. You step closer and closer, moving the distance between the two of you. His eyes are like the the screens, the blue screens of death. His, his, his sea green eyes are actually the sea green screen of death. He covered his mouth with a hand. He must have forgotten about the firefly resting there and flew off into the night with a twinkle. 
He used his other hand to shakily reach over and interlace his fingers with yours. He gripped you tightly as he started sobbing harder. You cried with him. You wiped away his tears. You squeezed his hand back. You smiled at him. You chuckled affectionately. I'm gonna wipe away his tears. Gently, you took your free hand and wiped his tears away. I love you, Cove. It's okay, Cove. It's okay, I promise. Yeah, I had a feeling you would go like this. Can you tell me how you feel? You weren't able to speak. It's okay, Cove. It's okay, I promise. Cove removed his hand from his mouth and used it to hold the back of your head. You brought your face to him and your forehead brushed together. Oh, this is so sweet. He looked straight into your eyes. His voice trembled, it cracked, and it shook. This was raw, straight from Cove's heart. I'm sure this is hard for him to say. I'm sure that it's something he's been wanting to say for a long, long time, maybe even for years, and he just couldn't bring himself to say it. So this is a huge moment for him. I love you. He closed his eyes tightly and repeated himself, but now he could say it firmly. I love you. His aqua eyes sparkled when he opened them again. Fresh tears poured out with an outburst of emotion. Sorry? Vaughn, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I can't get it together. I just, I tried so much to love you quietly, secretly, and that being it, but I, I really wanted you to feel the same. I wanted you to love me back. I wanted to hear you say it. I just kept thinking, what if you didn't? Maybe what I felt was too much, and I mean, we've been going out for a while. And I feel like we've been together for such a long time. Not being in love with him would be kind of bizarre, I think. At this point. By this point, I mean. Because we've known each other for how long? And we've been kind of sort of been hanging out slash flirting slash dating for how long? I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't know what to do. But I didn't want to put any of that on you either. You weren't doing something bad. Everything you do is right and wonderful. I'm always like this. It wasn't this. your fault. I had to be like that. I'm just like that. I, I think it's just me personally. If I'm dating you for more than like six months, if I date you for more than six months, the only reason why I would stick around is because I love you, right? Because I wouldn't stick around if I wasn't falling in love with you. If I, if I didn't see myself falling in love with you by six months, I would not continue because I, I ult my ultimate goal of course is to get married and have a family and have the cat and the dog and the picket fence and the kids and all that good stuff which I'm still working on the cat and dog and picket fence part but um, yeah if it's so if I was with Cove this whole time of course I'm going to be in love with him by this point because I wouldn't be his boyfriend by that by now if that wasn't the case it wasn't your fault i had to be like that i just like i'm just like that he leaned in closer hiding his face from view his lips trailing over your ear he whispered but you love me you love me he moved his head back so his forehead was centered on yours and then he closed his eyes he shook the hand he still held was trembling i'm so sorry i'm really always like this you kissed him, you held him, you gave him a moment. I'm just gonna hold him. You pulled him tightly against you tightly. He leaned at your touch desperately. You could feel goosebumps on his skin, and when you rested your chin on his shoulder, you saw the little hairs on the back of his neck stood up. Cove managed to bring a fragile smile onto his face. He was still shaking, but there was something decided about him now. I love you. I love you, Vaughn. I love you. He repeated more, as if to make up for all the times he didn't let himself say it before. As he spoke, his tears dried up and his breathing became even more even. The reaffirmation helped him calm down. Thank you for telling me. I mean, it felt right, right? It felt right. Cove's smile was bolder even, even as his voice wavered and he ducked his head with, his child, with a childish shyness. He clearly fought against getting emotional again. His watery eyes, his must hair, the tears drying on his cheeks. You loved him so much. I needed to tell you. You've always been i you've always been lucky, haven't you? I'm so so happy you've done it. You're welcome. I was only it was only the truth. I love you. Um Cope held the sides of your face, but moved his thumb down to softly brush your lips. It was exciting. He wanted to keep touching you, and you wanted that that too. Oh, is this going where I think it's going? You kissed his lips, you kissed his neck, you kissed all over his face, you ran a hand through his hair. You pressed him up against the wall. You moved your hands down to his chest. You grabbed his butt. You whispered his name. Oh my gosh. 